Asian here can confirm every Asian stereotype in this game is true. We can all take my word on that, or better yet, we can take the initiative to see the new video games on the market and today we are looking at Shadow Warrior 2 by Flying Wild Hog. I was not impressed with the reboot they did of Shadow Warrior, yet here we are three years later with the sequel. How is it? Let's find out. Shadow Warrior 2 has a lot of changes from its predecessor. For one thing, the core game loop moves away from the linear level design with its lockdown areas and points of no return. In its place, you have these massive areas you can explore. You can approach your objective from multiple paths and you can backtrack as much as you want. The minimap shows you the path to the objective, but you don't need to strictly follow it. It simply recalculates the path to the objective no matter where you go. You no longer go sequentially from one level to the next. You have a hub level where you can purchase stuff and there's the addition of side quests that take place on a randomly chosen map. So right off the bat, the game has replayability. Everyone's playthrough will be different. The game no longer tries to force melee combat by making the guns weak like it was in the previous game. You can run and gun or get up close and personal. You just upgrade and build your character for your playstyle. They revamped the whole upgrade system. It's a loot driven game in that you can acquire upgrades of varying quality from enemies or loot crates and you can attach these upgrades to your weapons to make them stronger. If you've played action RPGs, a lot of the same rules apply here. For example, the assault rifles and machine guns have low damage but a high rate of fire. You boost its damage by increasing its critical hit chance and adding elemental damage. 7 damage per hit turns into 25 to 30 damage per hit. And it melts a lot of these enemies, particularly the ones who are vulnerable to the chosen element. Health regeneration was one of the things I criticized in the previous game. You could regenerate most of your health during combat once you acquire the right abilities. As long as you didn't die, you can abuse it. It's still present in this game, but it now requires Chi to activate. It's also much less effective, unless you spend the skill points and the upgrade slots to make it more powerful. So now it's integrated into the balance of the game instead of being this safety net for the more casual players. The dodge movement in the game reminds me a lot of Unreal Tournament, but some of you know this about me. I prefer Quake's movement with its strafe jumping. But you do have a dedicated key for dodging, so you won't wear your fingers out. I'm just glad they got rid of sprinting and the stamina bar. Now we can quickly move around like an arena FPS with the double jumping and the dodge movement. The combat caters to this as well. The special enemy spawns and the elemental strengths and weaknesses means every encounter is different. They're no longer pure bullet sponges coming at you like before. They still have stronger enemies that can take a beating, but they also mix in a group of weaker enemies that can swarm you. It changes the way you initiate a fight, if at all. In my case, sometimes I go with a grenade spam or sometimes I hit with an initial headshot or a stab attack. It also changes the dynamics of the fight itself. Normally I would switch to a short range weapon for short range combat. I have my shotgun bound to the fire element, so when I see a guy on fire charging at me, I have to fall back and pull out my rifle because that's bound to the ice element. Unless they're protecting an objective, you can avoid a fight altogether if you want. You can take a different route or sneak by them with the vanish ability. I just like to take everything out, but there have been a few instances where I ran out of ammo, I couldn't take them on and getting close would be very dangerous, so I had to go somewhere else. You would think the game would be repetitive, but it really doesn't feel like that. The combat is just amazing, but I found the game to be a bit easy, and I am playing on the hardest difficulty, no pain, no gain. Some of the enemies can close the gap very quickly and chase you down even with the dodge movement. Sometimes I have to run around the entire map because a fight is too hard to take head on, but some of them end up chasing me and some stay behind. But then I aggro another group of enemies who join the fight and do the same thing. I eventually find myself back at part of the first group with some of their health already gone from earlier, so I just have to finish them off. The enemies do respawn after a while, so that's something to watch out for. Even though I found it a bit on the easy side, the game really is trying to challenge me skill-wise, not just throw in a bunch of gimmicks that make it look harder than it is. Everyone finds out about these sooner or later, but right now, I can't find any sort of cheesy exploit that causes the difficulty to nosedive. 
It looks like they spent a lot of time balancing everything out, so you can build and play however you want and have it still be viable while still providing a decent challenge. I do have a problem with the low amount of maps in the pool. The side quests in particular seem to take place on the same 4 to 5 maps, and while they are very big maps and they procedurally generate the starting point in all of the enemy and loot box spawn locations, you'll eventually get the same map twice and you'll notice you've been there before. But given what the game has to offer, it's easy to look past that. The game even supports 4 player co-op. I am really liking this game. It's a hybrid dungeon crawler and arena FPS. I didn't like the reboot much, but I am very impressed with what I'm seeing here. So we have this amazing game with a lengthy campaign of around 16 to 18 hours and a good amount of replayability. What's going to happen over the next few months? The Let's Plays coming out over the next few weeks will probably be worth paying attention to because everyone's playthrough will be different. Different weapon builds, different skills, even different maps for the side quests. There will also be co-op Let's Plays. Those tend to be few and far between. Along with that is the usual post-release support like bug fixes, optimizations, and possibly a few balance changes if absolutely needed. I haven't noticed anything in particular that desperately needs a buff or a nerf, but I'm sure those are bound to eventually surface. I think there will still be people playing this after a few months. It's a replayable single player game and it has co-op. Considering the greater reception this game had over the last one, I would think they would be much more inclined to give it greater support. They did add a survival arena mode in the last game post release and I don't see why they wouldn't do the same thing here, especially when this game has co-op. And with the loot drop mechanics and upgrading weapons and skills between waves, it would be awesome. I would also expect a new story DLC for the same reasons. This game has so much potential because of its replayability and its co-op and I think the developer will take advantage of that. Shadow Warrior 2 takes all the good and fun elements of games like Painkiller, mixes it with the dungeon crawling and loot drops of Diablo and Borderlands, and turns it into something that's hard to compare, not just to the previous game, but also to the original 1997 release. If you didn't like the Shadow Warrior reboot for its linearity and its so-called modern features targeting the casual crowd, you'll probably like this game. A lot of the problems were addressed here and this game tries to be different from other games. It's more of an action RPG than the run of the mill first person shooter these days, yet it has the fast movement mechanics and the aiming of an arena FPS. I really like it. As a side note, you might have noticed I never mentioned anything about the story. Honestly, I really don't care. There's a girl stuck in your head, you need to get her out, you crack a few dick jokes, whatever. It's there to set the stage for the gameplay which I'm really enjoying. The regular price is $40. Normally I would tell you to wait for a sale, but the game is on sale for an entire week. It's 10% off, might as well get it now. Even the regular price is pretty good for what you get and in a few months, we'll check back to see what happens with this game. Thanks for watching.